Hey guys, welcome back to Charlie and Me, our camping vlog. This is another questions and answers, if you recall, a couple of Wednesdays ago. Uh, we threw up the first of a questions and answer video. I had asked you guys under one of our YouTube community posts, which is a photograph, would you like a question and answers video? You said yes. We got enough questions for two. Part one is gone. This is part two. The questions are about Charlie and me, and I think some of these are about the Camping Crew podcast with myself and Chris as well. So let's get into it. Question number one. Bailey306 said, when camping, do you leave your awning out overnight? No, I don't. I don't. If it's raining, if it's windy, I definitely don't. In fact, if we're sitting out in it during the day and it starts to rain, I wind in my awning. We have, um, I think it was from Decathlon, a little gazebo. We call it the Gin Palace. I have a video up on the Gin Palace before. I would leave that up. If we're staying somewhere for more than a weekend, we would use that, especially if we're with the camping crew. But if we're just staying somewhere for a weekend and I wind out, wind out the awning, it goes back in at nighttime before we go to bed. Karen and Jay asked, should we buy, le should we buy leveling blocks? Yes, there's no harm having them. A lot of the campsites, not most, but a lot of the campsites, the pitches are pretty level. But if you go to an airs or a field or like Ardmore or Roaches or Bano Bay, they might come in handy because they're just fields and the grass might be a little bit unlevel. There is no harm in getting leveling blocks. We have a yellow set, which I think is a three inch lift. And then I have a black set that I think is a six inch lift. I don't think I've ever used the six inch ones. I might have used them on the B ball once, but yeah. There's no harm in having a set of leveling blocks in your camper van. I've never seen caravans use them. I'm not saying they don't, but I've never seen caravans use them. Aiden Luby asks, I noticed you got rid of the smart car and the trailer and you bought a Fiat 500 and an A-frame. Which do you prefer? It's a great question. I have the Fiat 500 now, just short of three years, and I love it. The hassle, the smart car was fantastic. I love the smart car, but the hassle with hauling the smart car. I'll go out to the storage unit. I'll hitch on the trailer. Then I have to drive the smart car up onto the trailer, which means you've got to pull down the ramps, drive the car up. Then you have to strap the car, push back up the ramps, and then you head off to your venue. When you get to your campsite, you then have to put out the ramps again, unstrap the car, drive the car off, which, by the way, you're paying a five or four on most campsites. And then you've got to put the trailer somewhere. One campsite, only one campsite ever, has charged me a tenner because there was a car and a trailer. One campsite in France said, you can park the trailer beside you on your pitch, but the car has to go out in the car park, and that was a Euro. I much prefer, I miss I miss the smart car, because it was a great bit of fun, but I much prefer having the Fiat 500. The A-frame I got from the UK, I think it was caratow.co.uk. Um, it was 1,200 pounds sterling and another couple of hundred to get it fitted. It's hitched up in seven minutes from start to finish, and it's unhitched in seven minutes from start to finish. So um, much prefer the Fiat 500. Uh, thank you for that, Aiden. Brian asks, hey, Aaron, I would like to do more wild camping, but I have to admit being nervous stopping somewhere where there's no other vans. Um, I have found some amazing spots. Do people advise avoiding town spots or are remote spots actually the riskier? Uh, I don't want to be getting hassled from troublemakers. I would love to learn how to wild camp safely, judge spots well, and take precautions, whatever they are. Brian, um, we don't wild camp. I like the security of a campsite. I like the community of a campsite. I like being plugged in. However, now that we have the VW T3, myself and Charlie will do more wild camping because it's a smaller van. However, a lot of people wild camp and do nothing else they just wild camp we have friends that follow charlie and me in the podcast a whole group of them that are in self-converted vans they're easier to wild camp in than your normal camper van uh, wild camping to me is the likes of ardmore or bano bay where if there's no power there's no power but you're talking about driving up into a woods and staying overnight and there's a lot of places you can do that if you my my, my expression on this is good feeling if you pull up and you say, oh, my God, this is lovely, but you've a good feeling and you don't feel comfortable, move. Pull away and move somewhere else. That's the way I would feel. Myself and Deirdre years ago, before Charlie and me and Camp Start Review and the podcast went camping. Somewhere in Nina, we wanted to wild camp by a lake. 
and I just didn't feel comfortable. So we ended up going to the Glen of Arlo for the night. Another time, myself and a few friends stayed in Galway, which is now totally anti-camper, in my opinion. But we stayed on the harbour. And I would I only stayed there because there was two other vans there. So wild camping is not for me. There's a lot of people, campsites are not for them. So just be wary of your surroundings. Park in such a manner that you have access to get into your van from the back into the front if you need to get away in a hurry, just in case you feel uncomfortable. Now, the man asks, what are your favorite things you have in your camper? Um, I'd say the Wi-Fi, the TV. I love my Ridge Monkey pan and grill, but I honestly think one of my favorite things, and there's a video going back a long, 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 long time ago. I'm not even going to be able to find it, but we bought a kitchen towel holder for your paper towels and it's ratchet so it doesn't roll off when you're driving. A lot of people just throw a, uh, an elastic band around it, but this yoke is ratchet and it's brilliant. I think that would be one of my favorites, but I love my TV, I love my Wi-Fi, I love my fire stick. I love uh, my Ridge Monkey pan, but I think that's my favorite little gadget. Alan Leach asks, who did the graphics on the Bebop? A company called Smart Art in Clonmel. He's been doing graphics for me for years on previous jobs long before Charlie and me and YouTube and Facebook when I worked in radio. We used to get our cars and vans branded Smart Art in Clonmel. Um, he doesn't like doing, like if you go and you want the word Heimer replaced or deathless, he doesn't like trying to find those fonts. Um, I'm getting some unusual graphics done on the VW. I haven't approached them yet, but I'm hoping that he'll do it. Well, he'll do a good job. I'm just hoping that he'll do the job for me. Right, two more to go. John asks, oh, John, again, seemingly John asked the question earlier. What happens when Charlie and me, when you've covered all of the sites in Ireland? I wrote the answer in this down. I said, well, John, we will cover our holidays abroad and we review sites there. And I'll re-review sites as we do already. Um, I don't know. I'm re-reviewing, -re even re-re-re-reviewing campsites at the moment because some of them have made changes. At the, when we're making this, and today's date is the 8th of July, I hope to head back up to Linders in Port Rand because they've now added a new toilet block and they've added new playgrounds, but we were only there less than a year ago. So there's always changes being made to campsites, and we will re-re-re-review them. Uh, when we go to France or wherever we go abroad, we tend to go away every second year. Well, wherever we go, um we'll review them we're planning on going back to wales brexit has messed up everything regards the united kingdom but we'd like to go back to wales we will review those campsites um so look we'll just keep going for as long as we can and eventually we will run out of campsites and projects and then i suppose we'll just knock it on the head but the videos will always be there uh john you know they're, they're up there forever until youtube switches off the videos are going to be there right last one Phil and Leah ask, you sold the B-Bar and now you have the VW. What is your plan for that? I've always wanted a Volkswagen T3. That's the van that I have. The, there's the bay windows, the splitties, the T2s, the T3s. I think they're on T6.1 now. They could even be on a T7. I've always wanted one. My friend, uh, Joe Keegan, had one in the 1970s, a camper van, and I loved the big stern wheel. I was too young to be driving it then, but it's... Um, my dad... About 30 years ago, we bought my dad a T2 van. And then for Christmas, we bought him alloy wheels. And my sisters bought him a high roof. And I remember seeing Stephen's Day out in the lashings of rain and snow uh, back in the 80s, cutting the roof off the van to fit the high roof. So there's always been a Volkswagen desire for a Volkswagen. One of the camping crew, Rona and Matchman, have a beautiful 1972 T2. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love them. But I've always wanted a T3. And then I put a call out on one of the Facebook groups looking for one. I can't weld. I can't paint. And Paul in Northern Ireland, who drives the T3, was doing this project. And he said, look, it's unfinished. I'll sell it to you. So the plan for the T3 is the b is gone, as you said. Who sent this in? Phil and Leah. The b is gone uh, to a new home. And the plan is for myself and Charlie to hang on to this. Um, Deirdre likes her comforts. She likes the toilet. She likes the shower. This yoke will only have a little porty loo, but she will come away with us in it. I want to go to a few Volkswagen meetups or vintage car shows. It's a 1989. At this point again, when did I say we were? July 8th. We're almost ready to book it in for a DOE. Now, whether it passes or not is another thing. But, yeah, I plan on hanging on to this. And myself and Charlie will do a little bit of wild camping in it. And we'll head off to a few 
uh, campsites in it as well. Can I draw your attention to the Charlie and Me website here on the screen? If you log on to charlieandme.ie, we have merchandise that we sell, mugs and T-shirts and stuff. We can even do your name on mugs. It's not just Charlie and Me stuff. We, we do corporate stuff as well. Um, mugs, T-shirts, hoodies. We don't do baseball caps, although I think we're getting some beanies in to have a bash at them. charlieandme.ie, uh, click on the limp. The link that says shop and the shop will open up with all of the merchandise that we have on the charlie and me website we also sell camping crew podcast merchandise as well so we would really appreciate your support any money we make from that goes into paying for the campsites paying for the diesel paying for the petrol paying for anything we need to do to keep the charlie and me going that is it that is our second questions and answer video thank you if you have any questions that you'd like charlie and me to answer sales at charlieandme.ie is the handiest place to get us if you have anything for the podcast regards to the videos not questions for the podcast but anything regards the videos uh you can get us at sales at charlieandme.ie check out the camping crew podcast with myself and chris on wednesdays wherever you listen to your podcast just search for the camping crew and on Fridays, we do the Charlie and Me videos as long as we have a video to throw up on a Friday and van build videos on the Wednesday. Although by the time this goes up on the Wednesday, the van build may be over. From me, from Charlie, who's out in the garden sunning himself, take care. And remember, if you see us on a campsite, please do call over and say hi. Take care. Bye-bye.